Hey guys, welcome back to Basics with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at donuts, or the best known excuse for eating deep fried cake for breakfast. We're gonna whip up a mess of jelly and cream filled donuts and take a look at the lesser known sour cream donut. Let's get down to the gym, to basics. Let's get down to basics. All right guys, so let's start out by making a standard yeasted donut. We're gonna start by blooming our yeast in some milk that we've heated, overheated to 120 degrees. We're gonna let it come down to 110, add one teaspoon of sugar as a nice little snack for our yeast. And we're adding one packet or two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. Then we're gonna measure out our dry ingredients. First up, 350 grams of all-purpose flour, 75 grams of plain old white sugar, and one teaspoon of table salt that we're going to whisk together using America's favorite whisk, tiny whisk, before starting to add wet stuff. First off, three large egg yolks from three large eggs, and our milk and yeast mixture, which as you can see after 10 minutes has bloomed into a big, hot, foamy mess. We're gently just bringing all this together with a wooden spoon, or you can do it with your hands. Either way, we're mixing it until the dough forms a single shaggy mass, one that we can turn out onto a lightly floured countertop and knead for no fewer and no greater than eight minutes. After this nice little single arm workout, we should be left with a ball of smooth, supple dough, one that we are going to cover in an oiled bowl and let rise for about one hour or until doubled in size. This is the perfect time to get started on our fillings. We're gonna start with a vanilla creme pat. We're starting by combining three large egg yolks, one whole egg, 85 grams of sugar, and maybe like 30 grams of cornstarch. We're whisking this together using normal sized whisk until it is smooth and creamy, and then we're going to add just a dab of vanilla paste until we get a smooth ribbony mixture into which we are going to slowly pour two cups of almost boiling milk. An emphasis on slowly here, at least for about the first half of the milk. This is going to temper the eggs and prevent them from turning scrambled. The latter half, you can add at a slightly more aggressive pace because the eggs have been tempered. We're then returning this mixture back to the saucepan, returning that saucepan to the stovetop and returning the heat to medium low while whisking constantly until nice and thick. This is gonna take about five minutes and it's gonna look like it's not working, but trust me, it is. We're then transferring our creme pat into a bowl, giving it a little taste, burning our finger, because it's hot, and pressing plastic wrap directly down onto the surface of the pastry cream, so as it does not form a skin. We are then refrigerating this for at least two hours or until chilled completely, during which time we are going to deal with our donut dough, turning it out onto a lightly floured surface, patting it ineffectually a few times before rolling out to about a half inch thickness. Once we've got it appropriately thin, we're using a biscuit cutter dusted with flour to cut these guys down into donut sized rounds. We are then retrieving these little guys and placing them on a well floured rim baking sheet for a second and final rise of about 45 minutes. You should of course repurpose your dough scraps, but these are going to yield kind of misshapen donuts, so they're little snacks for the chef. Once you've used up all your dough and everybody's sitting pretty on the rim baking sheet, we're going to cover and let rise for 45 minutes, just until they've puffed up a bit. Then when they're almost ready to go, we're going to heat up some vegetable oil in a cast iron skillet until it reaches 350 degrees Fahrenheit, at which point our donuts are going for a little swim. They should float immediately, and within about 45 seconds to a minute, they're going to be ready to flip. Another 45 seconds to one minute later, and they are ready to be removed and drained on a wire rack. They must then be allowed to cool completely, but before they do, I'm going to coat half of these in sugar, which you got to do while they're still warm. The rest I'm leaving plain for now, because next up we got to make a chocolate glaze. I'm combining four ounces of chopped chocolate with a quarter cup of steaming whole milk, then I'm going to add a little shot of instant espresso powder and a couple tablespoons of cornstarch. We're whisking that to combine, and now that our donuts are cool, it's time to fill and frost. Into a tall drinking glass goes our piping bag. That makes it a little bit easier to fill, and then we're gonna fill it with our vanilla creme pat, which as you can see has thickened up considerably in the refrigerator. Then using a paring knife, we're making a little entry point into all of our donuts, into which our fillings can be deposited. Once everybody's all chock full of cream, it's time to glaze. Simply dunk the top of the donut into our chocolate glaze and let it harden up for like 20 minutes. Then into our sugar-coated donuts goes a bit of seedless raspberry jam. Same procedure, poke a hole, squeeze some stuff into it, and rejoice because look, you just made donuts all by yourself. You have broken free of the stranglehold that Big Donut has had on the donut industry since before you were born. Now, these donuts are great. They're classic yeasted donuts, but I have a soft spot for sour cream donuts, which have more of a crispy, craggled exterior and a moist, dense interior. We're starting by sifting together 600 grams of cake flour, one and a half tablespoons of baking powder, and two teaspoons 
tablespoons of table salt. Simply sift that together and set aside while we combine five egg yolks in the bowl of a stand mixer along with 250 grams of plain white sugar and two and one half tablespoons of unsalted butter that we're going to cream together using the paddle attachment. Then to this mixture, we're adding about half of our dry ingredients, mixing just to combine before adding 380 grams of sour cream. We are then beating this mixture together until everybody's well incorporated before adding the remaining dry ingredients. We're blending that together using the paddle attachment for 45 seconds to one minute, making sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl because we want everybody to thoroughly get to know each other. We don't want any stragglers at this party. This is going to leave us with a wet, sticky dough that we're going to place into a bowl, which we are going to cover and let rest in the fridge until completely chilled about an hour, after which you will notice that this dough has become significantly more workable. So we're turning it out onto a floured surface and rolling out again to about a half inch thickness. Then we are liberally dusting our cutter in flour because this is a very sticky dough. And for this one, we're using an actual donut cutter. So this way we get donuts and holes. In theory, that is. We just gotta get this guy out of here somehow. Let's try shaking it violently, see what that does. Nothing. In the end, you gotta sort of just gently coax it out of there, making sure not to pinch any edges. Rinse and repeat with the remaining dough until we have a whole bunch of donuts and holes, all of which are going straight into a 350 degree vat of oil. They are going to sink it first and then very quickly rise to the top. Once they're looking nice and golden brown on one side, go ahead and give them a flip. And you can see that the exteriors of these donuts are splitting open. That is what we want. That is the characteristic look of the sour cream donut. We're letting these cool completely on a wire rack, making sure to fry our donut whole as well. These are going to cook a little bit faster, and then while these all cool off, it's time to make our glaze. We're starting by sifting about 400 grams of powdered sugar, to which we are going to add two teaspoons of light corn syrup and a quarter cup of boiling water. Whisk until completely combined and no lumps remain. Give it a little taste to make sure that it's sweet enough. I'm kidding, this is just pure sugar. And once our donuts have cooled off completely, it's time to drop them in, give them a little fork toss, and then fish them out, repeating until everybody has a nice thin layer of sweet saccharin icing. Then we just gotta let these harden for about 20 minutes before testing our hand-eye coordination. That only took me like five attempts, I swear. And there you have it, simple glazed sour cream donuts. You can get creative with these, try using maple syrup instead of water in the glaze, frost them, dip them, sprinkle them, whatever you like. Do not let anyone tell you how to donut. Sorry. I'll see you guys next week at the bi-weekly live stream where I will be making these donuts live here on YouTube and you can tune in anytime to chat with me, shoot the breeze, or cook along. I'll see you guys then. Until then, stay basic. Or, eh, maybe not. I gotta figure out a good sign-off catchphrase. I'll get back to you on that.